I am Keith Dresser. I am the executive food editor for Cook's Illustrated Magazine. So we are in the America's Test Kitchen Library, um, so kind of the nerve center of, of recipe research. Most people think of ATK as the kitchens, but there's a lot of work done in here. Um, I mean, the cooks use this as uh, a research library, but mainly I use the, uh, the library for recipe ideas um, and kind of to trying to decide what recipes we're gonna do for the upcoming year. We only have 60 recipes in, in the year for Cooks Illustrated, so we want to make sure that we have a, a wide range that would suit a lot of people's tastes. What we do is we, we map out uh, the entire year, um, uh, like we're working on the year 2020 right now. So we're a year in advance for kind of planning out that, but um, the cooks are actually using, um, you know, six to eight months in advance uh, for, for the print recipes. It's not us kind of in the kitchen saying, oh, let's do this recipe, let's do this recipe. Uh, we survey our readers. We actually get point totals for recipes based on how people, would you make this in your home? And if people say no, then we're not gonna develop that kind of recipe in the magazine. Do you think this one is more like a chocolate fudge pie with pecans, whereas this one's like more like a pecan pie with chocolate in it? I'm Brian Roof, I'm the executive food editor for Cook's Country Magazine. The biggest key to the development process is the five recipe test. It's the stepping stone to the beginning of the recipe. I have two samples of whipped cream for you guys to try also. So we have a tasting of chocolate pecan pie. We have three different samples here, and each one has a slightly different variation on the chocolate flavor. So we're looking for the most intense, most pleasant chocolate flavor in each one of these. So what we do is we take recipes that we find online in cookbooks, from word of mouth, from friends and family, and we pit them all together five recipes and each one of them has to be different in some way from the next. So if it's a, a pecan pie, it's going to be a different dough, a different filling, a different style of pecan. Uh, and we'll taste all five of those pies right next to each other. And we all give feedback to the test cook who's making the pies. And from there, they cobble together a working recipe. Uh, for example, we like this dough, we like this style of pecan, uh, we like this style of custard that's in, in the pie. And they move forward building a working recipe from there. So this was a chocolate test. Um, which one did people kind of, or like number three? Okay, yeah. So I got a lot of I got a lot of votes for one and three. So we'll go through and taste each one. Notice the texture and the flavor, and also kind of comment on the visual appearance of the pies. Whether this one looks lighter than this one, or this one looks darker and it's you know more appealing, and tells us more that it's a chocolate pecan pie. We'll go through, taste it, and we'll come back and we'll comment. Let the, uh, the uh, recipe developer know what we think. I enhance the chocolate flavor with two teaspoons of espresso powder, and this has two tablespoons of cocoa powder. Oh, really? Powder. That one has cocoa? Yeah. The favorite thing about my job, um, I, I think it's, it's the collaborative effort. Um, you, you know, not one person has the knowledge for, you know, all these recipes. So um, kind of coming together as a group and workshopping recipes and trying to find the best solution behind recipes is uh, very rewarding. You have to be a good taster. You have to be willing to accept the feedback and criticism that comes from making a recipe. When you devote all this time, it could be 15 minutes to several hours a day developing one tasting. You have to be able to absorb what your, your companions, your, uh, the rest of your team has to say about it, take it, and think about where to go next, what the next step of the recipe is gonna be, and you know, move forward with joy.